Hi there, students. Thank you for being part of this presentation. My name is Luis Silva, and today we are going to be focusing on American government, foundations of U.S. democracy, and our focus will be on the political system of the United States. What will we be learning today? First, the structure and institutions of the U.S. government. Second, what are the important documents of the United States? And uh, lastly, what are the guiding principles of the United States? But we, before we keep on going, I want to read this quote to you by Thomas Jefferson. A government big enough to give you everything you want is strong enough to take everything you have. Now, this is a very important quote because Thomas Jefferson was one of the founding fathers. And in this quote, it's talking about up to a certain degree, a fear of having a strong government that can potentially take away everything from its citizens. So as we keep on going, this quote becomes very relevant because it led to the creation of a government in which power is divided between three branches and the national level and between the uh, states also. Now, the structure and institutions of the U.S. government. First, the United States is divided into three branches. The first branch is the legislative branch. This is the branch that's in charge of creating laws for the entire nation. And this legislative branch is known as Congress. Now, Congress has two branches within itself. The first uh, branch is the Senate. You know, the Senate, 100 senators, two per state. And the other component of Congress is the House of Representatives with 435 members. Those members obviously come from different states. And depending on the population, that is the number of representatives that is actually given to that state. The second component of the U.S. government is the executive branch. This is the branch that carries out the law. So Congress passes the laws and the, the president, in this case, the executive branch, is in charge of carrying out those laws. Now, the top leader of the executive branch is the president. Then you have the vice president and then you have the cabinet. That is basically the executive branch. Lastly, we have the judicial branch. This is the court system. They interpret laws. And the court system is made up of the Supreme Court, which is the biggest court in the United States. They have the ultimate word and say on anything. And you have other federal courts. Once again, the U.S. government is divided into three. The legislative, the executive, and the judicial branch. Now, the United States has a unique system, I would say, uh, that works perfectly well here in our country. Other countries uh, actually have a system that are similar, but in our country, this tends to work fairly well. And this is the concept of federalism. This is when you talk about powers, basically, delegated to the national government and powers delegated to the states in reference to and in this case, to the national government, they the government has the power to declare war, create and ma maintain armed forces, the military, abolish foreign or establish, I should say, foreign policy, regulate interstate and foreign trade, make copyright and patent laws, establish postal offices, and coin money. Now, these are powers delegated to the states. Remember... Federalism is basically having two uh, forms or two governments. You have a national government and you have a state government and they share power, basically. Now, powers delegated or reserved to states are established local governments. By the way, in the United States, we have 50 uh, different uh, states. They all have a government. They all have different cities. Now, Power reserves to states, establish and maintain schools, regulate trade within states, 
conduct elections, and provide for the public safety. These are some of the uh, powers that have been delegated or reserved to the states. Now, some of the powers that both uh, governments, the central government as well as state government share is or are, one, raise taxes, two, provide for the public welfare, three, a criminal justice, borrow money, charter banks, and build roads. These are some of the powers that are basically combined or, or uh, between both uh, the state government as well as the national government. So remember, federalism is again the idea of sharing power, both the national government and the state governments. Also remember that the United States is a representative democracy or a republic. What do we mean by representative democracy? We mean that we elect, we vote for people. We vote for who we want to be president. We vote for our congressmen. We work uh, basically or work really hard to uh, get somebody that we really like and is looking after our interests into government. We vote for senators. We vote for governors. And uh, we vote for basically people that would or represent us as you know, a leader of our city, a leader of our state, as a leader of our country, our nation. Now, what are the important documents here in the United States? Well, first we have the U.S. Constitution. This is like the most important document nowadays. This document was written in 1787 and it was ratified in 1788. And it's basically the guiding force behind our government. Now, other documents that are really important, it's, for example, the Declaration of Independence. When we told, uh, or the Founding Fathers told Great Britain that we were actually breaking away from them because we were not happy with them. We have also the Articles of Confederation. We have the Federalist Papers. And, they, we, I mean... Adding to that, you have the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments. So all of these are very important documents that have shaped the way our country functions, that has, in a way, provided guidance for the United States in order to continue to be a symbol of freedom, a symbol of democracy, and obviously a, a, a symbol that wants or will be standing tall all the time. Now, what are the guiding principles of the U.S. government? But before we get to those guiding principles, where did those guiding principles come from? Now, a lot of those or the guiding principles that we have here in the United States come from old U.S. documents. They come from uh, old world documents. And they come from philosophers, especially Enlightenment thinkers you know those philosophers like like montesquieu that pretty much said that you know the government had to be divided in order to limit its power so all of those documents all of this basically uh, old as well as newer documents have contributed to the guiding principles of the united states and right here we have seven guiding principles first we have popular sovereignty two we have republicanism Three, we have federalism. Four, we have separation of powers. Five, we have checks and balances. Six, we have limited government. And seven, we have individual rights. Now, there are more guiding principles than this, but this should give you the idea of how our government is supposed to function. Now, for example, on the issue of limited government, we mentioned before that that is why we have and checks and balances, by the way, that is why we have separation of government. In, other, in the national level, we have, you know, three different branches. And that those three different branches have to work together in order to make sure that they are meeting the needs of the nation. And this is basically our presentation for today. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel and make sure that you follow us in order to continue to view new material, new content being presented to you. You have a fantastic day and I'll see you soon.